Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, I am going to talk about what is exactly Azure Databricks. So I have been making lots of videos on Azure Databricks, multiple topics related to Azure Databricks, but then I thought I should make a playlist where, uh, you know, I'll capture uh, the details of Azure Databricks from a very basic perspective. So even if you are new to Databricks, you can actually follow these 30 videos and after this these 30 videos you will be pretty confident in azure databricks and i hope you'll be able to clear lots of interviews which asks databricks questions this play series will have you know concepts like what is azure databricks what is an rdd what is a data frame what is basically how spark functions you know your structured streaming your spark streaming how do you perform your transformations inside databricks how do you select a cluster cluster configurations and lots of different things about databricks but essentially in these 30 videos i'll try to keep only important parts of it not anything more than what is required right so now let's move ahead to what exactly is azure databricks but do remember to like subscribe and share my channel so essentially this azure databricks is a concept which is an extension to the map reduce concept so if you want to really uh, be strong at the uh, you know at the basics of azure databricks you should understand this map reduce concept so this map reduce concepts were you know started by was started by google in their uh, research papers i think in 2003 uh, there was a research paper where they uh, you know had this concept of map reduce but do remember this map reduce was not in memory computation i will explain this map reduce to you uh, if you look at the screen right now what you see i have just uh, you know captured this from google images now if you see here you have an input where you have deer beer river car car river deer car beer so these are the different words that you have now in map reduce you actually have to do a transformation on this input and essentially in the final output you need to count the number of deer the count of each word so let's say deer how many times this deer has come in this input it has come two times right so if you see in the output you have deer comma two car has come let's say three times so you have in the final output car uh, count of car as three so this is essentially the count that you are doing on the data now this is your input and that is the final output now essentially you have to do a transformation so in this concept of map reduce what we do is we split the data so let's say you have a big file so uh, since i'm explaining map reduce to you through this image we have taken a subset of data right a very small data but essentially uh, just imagine you have let's say one terabyte of data and you have to do uh, you know this kind of count operation on it right so this map what does map reduce uh, you know the first stage of this map reduce what it says is you split the data you know you have one terabyte just split it you know so if you see it has three lines of data right so it has split the data it has split the input into three rows and this uh, you know split it output essentially it will go to a different computer for the execution right it will go to a different computer altogether for the execution in parallel so that is the concept of map reduce so the moment you split the data you will be able to do computation parallelly in different computers right in different hardwares you will be able to do it now for each of these computers where you send uh, this one input line it will try to do the computation it will try to do the mapping mapping as in it will see that in the first row you have deer one time you have beer one time you have river one time so it is mapped to one one and one so each of the computer has mapped your data uh, into the second stage which is the mapping now once your mapping is done data from all the computer is taken and uh, now the moment you take the data from all the computers you basically aggregate or you reduce the data right so reduce uh, this this part basically is an aggregation part right this reducing part the last part here now to uh, you know sum up how many deers are there in the whole input what you need to do you need to take the data from all of these computers and then you need to combine that data so you need to see that yes in the first computer is telling us a deer has come one time and the third computer is telling us that a deer has come one time so total uh, the aggregated result will be deer has come two times right now in this case in this case what you need to do is you need to check 
you know each and every computer you need to shuffle the data between each and every computer to check how many times beer has come how many times car has come how many times deer has come how many times river has come so this part is actually what is called as shuffling right so this aggregation part and uh, the the part which is trying to aggregate the data together which is trying to get the data together and which is trying to get the count together will cause shuffling of data between these computers and it will try to give you the final result so this is the concept of map reduce but the problem here is the basic problem because it was done not in memory it was not an in memory concept so uh, since it was not in memory it became really very difficult to manage this data across multiple hardwares right across multiple small hardwares across multiple small computers so now this map reduce actually turned into something that you know today as spark so spark also does also similar kind of execution but it does it in memory so that is why you know in my previous video i have been talking about that spark is an in memory computation because all of this computation what is this this is essentially transforming the data it is basically computing the data right so this is called an in memory computation which is done in spark now so this was a background from where this data brick started so now this map reduce was developed by you know uh, i don't remember the exact name of the person if i'm not wrong matty so uh, in his papers he basically developed this uh, you know spark concept of in memory computation and then he sold it off to apache spark and then they together built a company known as databricks right uh, so basically the creator of spark itself has uh, built uh, databricks so now if you see what exactly is databricks databricks is a platform where you can use spark and now spark is created you had map reduce earlier which was doing not in memory computation now you have spark which is an in memory computation of uh, you know big data basically so you have uh, huge loads of data in different formats now to do in memory computation of that data uh, you have a platform named as databricks it is a very simple definition right you can you know google and you'll have a lot of different definitions of azure databricks but essentially the main definition is this it is a platform to use spark right and now since it is a platform it is a developing platform they have lots of uh, you know optimizations over it so you can use spark very efficiently in azure databricks now coming on to the spark again i'll go back one step to talk about spark so as i already explained spark is an in memory computation so now uh, let us go through a formal definition of spark as well so apache spark is an open source parallel processing framework now when i say open source parallel processing framework it is open source it is available to all you can do a parallel processing as i have shown uh, you know in the map reduce it follows the same concept but in memory computation now it also uh, you know since it is splitting the data into multiple um, uh, in memory uh, machines right now what happens is it it is able to perform parallel processing so that is why you we are calling it as parallel processing framework that supports in memory processing to boost the performance of applications now since it is in memory computation it is definitely much more effective than our map reduce which was actually performed on the hardware it was actually performed on the computers now it is definitely used to analyze big data so here you get the first definition apache spark is an open source source parallel processing framework that supports that supports in memory processing to boost the performance of application that analyze big data right now big data solutions are designed to handle data that is too large or complex for traditional databases so if you talk about you know traditional databases you know you have structured data you cannot process big data uh, you know big data when i say big data it has different formats as well right so traditional databases cannot handle your semi structured or unstructured formats and they also cannot handle such a large a uh, volume of data right so spark can actually do that and similarly spark processes large amount of data in memory which is much much faster than a disk based alternatives now what is a disk based alternative is that map reduce map reduce is a disk based alternative so this is what your spark is and databricks is essentially only a platform where you can work in spark right 
Now coming on to the formal definition of Azure Databricks. So if you see, um, Databricks is a unified data analytics platform. Unified data analytics platform, what does this keyword mean? So this mean, this essentially means that this is a one place where multiple people can come together. When I say multiple people can come together, if you see data analysts can also work in Azure Databricks, data engineers can also work in Azure Databricks, your data science and machine learning team can also work in Databricks. So that is why it says unified data analytics platform. You can analyze the data together in a single platform. Right. And it is from the original creators of Spark. So as I already told you, there was a person named as Matty who actually developed. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his uh, you know name correct or not. But yeah, so he was the one who created Apache Spark and then he sold it to a, a, a he's the person who created this concept of, you know, in memory computation Spark and then he sold it to Apache Spark and he developed this organization named as Databricks along with the creators of uh, that is why you have this named as from original creators of Apache Spark. Now Databricks includes interactive notebook environment. Now, uh, you know, when I uh, move forward with this series, I'll show you each and everything in detail. Now, when you talk about this Databricks includes interactive notebook environment. Now what you see is, so for example, you know, you have to write a spark right you you have to process big data so you need an environment right to write some code so you need an environment to play with the data so that environment is essentially called as notebook inside databricks so where you write the data so if you have been if you are familiar with uh, jupyter so similar to the jupyter notebook you have something called as databricks notebook where you can play around with the data so it includes an interactive notebook environment, monitoring tools. Now, uh, once you create a job, basically, uh, f if you come from any XYZ background, so let's say you have been working on any XYZ platform. So there you create a job. You uh, let's say you create a Python notebook itself. Now there also you schedule it, right? So you need a monitoring tool for that. Similarly, Databricks also has a monitoring tool inside it, which we will, uh, you know, monitoring ui is the correct term so it has a monitoring ui uh, which we will see in the future videos and then it has security controls so definitely it is much secure we will talk about this later on because otherwise it will become a very long video and that makes it easy to leverage spark so why i am explaining each and every word to you is that you know if you understand each and every keyword well then in that case you don't need to remember these uh, you know um, how, how do I say these these kind of uh, definitions basically it will automatically it should naturally come to you right so Databricks offers three environments for developing data intensive application Databricks SQL Databricks data science and engineering Databricks machine learning so inside Databricks you have three parts Databricks SQL which is essentially used by data analysts much then you have data science and engineering which is used for uh, you know your data science uh, folks as well as your data engineers and then you have something called as uh, ml databricks for ml where you can train your models so these are the three environments within azure databricks which we will actually see the moment you see it you will recognize it you know much better so now uh, apart from this uh, you know, since we have talked about Spark a bit, so I'll just give you a very small, uh, you know, intro about Apache Spark. Uh, for example, this Apache Spark, right, it has multiple APIs. So the core APIs are basically R, SQL, Python, Scala and Java. So uh, in this, uh, especially in the Databricks environment, you can write your code since you have these APIs available. So if you write your code in R language, if you write code in the SQL language, if you write code in Python or if you write code in Scala, you can do that just because these APIs are available. So if you come from any of these backgrounds, it will become very easy for you to work in Databricks. Similarly, it has, uh, you know, APIs for the Spark streaming as well. So we will talk about streaming uh, in the little end of, uh, you know, this play series because streaming, uh, streaming concept, I will talk about much in detail after we have covered the batch uh, mode. So if you have data and you are processing it in batches, you are taking chunks of data and you are processing it. In streaming, what happens is as soon as the data arrives, as soon as the event arrives, as soon as the record arrives, you need to process it. 
so that is called a streaming so apache spark has a streaming api as well it has a machine learning api as well you can do graph computations as well so it is a very you know big concept and we are going to talk about even apache spark in detail so coming on, uh, on to the supported data types so when i say supported data sources sorry so when i say data sources since you have databricks right and uh, databricks is just a platform now to get the data and to send the data you need to uh, you need databricks to support the sources right so if you want to take the data from the sql server if you want to take the data from the sql database right not sql server basically sql database is the correct word so if you want to take the data from the sql database you want to take the data from amazon s3 you want to take the data from couchbase you want that databricks should support it right and trust me databricks supports a lot of these data sources in fact i would say all of these data sources what you can think of so uh, coming on to the you know uh, the ppt that you see you can connect to the sql databases using jdbc we will actually see how to how do we do that you can connect to amazon redshift you can connect to s3 you can connect to you know your azure blob storage you can connect to data like gen2 cosmos db which is your uh, no sql da database basically your sql data warehouse cassandra couchbase mongodb you know oracle you have all these sources and in fact even uh, you know many more so even if you want to you know uh, bring in some avro files json files parquet files Re redis cache snowflake data warehouse all these you know file formats all these file sources are actually very well supported by databricks we are going to go through all of them almost one by one in one or the other video for sure so thank you so much i hope you liked this video where um, uh, where i just tried to explain in the layman terms what exactly databricks is and uh, you know what it can do to a bit and we will cover most of the content in the upcoming videos so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel